Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, some of you, like me, are old enough to remember what it was like to get a phone call before the invention of caller ID, right? Did you ever have the experience where somebody called you up and instead of saying, you know, hi, Chris, this is George, how you doing? They just immediately kind of went into the spiel and I don't mean like a telemarketer, but somebody that you, that you knew. You knew that you knew the voice, but because they didn't say their name, you weren't quite sure who they were. Did that ever happen to any of you? Yeah, quite a few. And some people, see, they really have a hard time recognizing voices. Whenever a new song by one of our favorite singers comes on the radio, I can instantly recognize who the singer is and who the band is, but Lisa can't do this. She, by the way, she gave me permission to use her as the straw man for this sermon, but, but she, you know, she can't tell the difference between Taylor Swift and Katy Perry. She can't tell the difference between the Coldplay and the Fray and New Republic. Some of you might think they all sound the same anyway, but I often have expense at Lisa's, I often have fun at Lisa's expense by quizzing her on whether or not she can figure it out. And even like songs that have been in play on our iPod for a lot of times, I'll say, hey, who's singing this one? And she's like, uh, and I can tell her without even looking. Thankfully, for people like Lisa, you can now ask your phone, okay, Google, what song is this? And then after listening for about 15 or 20 seconds, it will tell you. But now there is a very small percentage of the population who actually have a neurological disorder that makes it impossible for them to recognize voices. It's called phonognosia, and such patients, you know, it doesn't mean that they, they, their brain can't process audio signals at all. Many of them can actually match pitch and have perfect pitch, but they can't tell the difference between different voices, even those of their family and close friends. One woman with this condition reported that it caused her great distress when she was on the playground and realized that she didn't know the difference between her own child's cry and those of the other children. So how would she know if something was wrong? Well, I would argue some people suffer from what you might describe as a spiritual form of phonognosia. They don't recognize the voice of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. In our Gospel lesson, Jesus tells his opponents, You do not believe because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. People who reject Jesus and his word fail to recognize the voice of Jesus. They fail to recognize the divine character of what he says. But Jesus' sheep, we recognize his voice. We know the difference between the voice of Jesus and that of a stranger. A stranger, they will not follow, Jesus says. They'll flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. And yet strangers do come. They try to break in among the fold. Jesus warns that many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And others will come claiming to be from God, but the pernicious doctrines that they they teach are deadly dangerous. That's why Paul, in his farewell to the Ephesian elders, the Ephesian pastors, says, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, and from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert. I've said before in sermons and in Bible class that the Bible never warns against things that don't have the potential to be dangerous. It doesn't warn us against false threats. And so the danger of false prophets, the danger of false teachers is very real. And that's why in another place Paul writes, even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one that we preach to you, let him be accursed. That's the way of death. That's the way of destruction. 
There are many voices that are clamoring for our attention today. Talking heads on the television, the voices on talk radio, internet blogs, news websites, social media, and sometimes voices from even actual books. <laughs> that sometimes people will actually read books. But as the sheep of God's flock, a f we should never listen to the voice of another shepherd, a false shepherd, a wolf in sheep's clothing, someone trying to break in to kill and destroy our faith and steal our hearts away from Jesus. Pay careful attention, Paul warns. Be alert. Jesus, the good shepherd, gently reminds us, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. But how do we recognize Jesus' voice? How do we know what he sounds like? There was not recording equipment 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked the earth. We can't pop in a CD or press play on an MP3 and hear the voice of Jesus. But there does remain one place, one place where with complete certainty, without any doubt, we can hear the voice of the shepherd. Unmistakably. And that is in the Holy Scriptures. The Bible contains all of God's commands and all of God's promises, and every single word of Scripture points to Christ. Martin Luther once said that if you could cut your Bible with a knife, it would bleed Christ. And Jesus himself says the same thing throughout the Gospels. Luke 23, which is actually the, the reading for... Um, for Easter in uh, the Series A of the lectionary. We'll hear it about a year from now. He says, Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to his disciples in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And so if you want to hear the voice of the shepherd, study your Bible. Listen to good preaching. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing the message of Christ. By not hearing regularly, your faith can shrivel up and die. It can fade away. And so we want to listen to Jesus. We want to follow him. Yet even as our shepherd takes the lead and guides us through the valley of the shadow of death on the way to the cross and the empty tomb, danger still arises. Temptation comes when you least expect it. False teaching can have just enough ring of the truth to trick us. And no matter how many Bible verses we memorize, no matter how many Bible studies we go to, no matter how many worship services we attend, we will still sin. We will still come up short. Because all we like sheep have gone astray and turned every single one of us to our own way. That's what the prophet Isaiah tells us. But the good news is that the Lord has laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. That our shepherd has borne our sin to the cross, and because he bled in our stead, God forgives us, and he gives us eternal life. We belong to Jesus now. Not the devil, not the world, not even ourselves. We belong to to Jesus. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. And now nothing, no one can snatch us out of Jesus' hand. No one can snatch us out of the Father's hand either. For as Jesus says, the Father and the Son are one. But there are sheep who are not yet part of Jesus' flock, people that don't believe in Jesus, at least not yet. I must bring them also, Jesus says in verse 16, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. Jesus came to save the whole world, to seek and save the lost. He leaves the 99 on the hillside and goes in search of that one lost sheep, including your unbelieving friends, your neighbors, your family, your co-workers and classmates, and at one time or another, you and me. 
Jesus laid down his life for the sheep. He took it up again when he rose from the dead on the third day. And he came so that all people could have abundant life, eternal life, life without end. And so we, as the sheep of Jesus, his little lambs, we bleat and we beckon that other sheep would come and join the flock to follow Jesus, to listen to his voice. The sheep hear his voice. He calls his sheep by name and leads them out. And today the good shepherd calls to you. Will you listen to him? Will you hear Jesus? Will you follow him in paths of righteousness? At the end of time, Jesus will separate the sheep from the goats. Don't be a goat. Be a sheep. Be a sheep. Because Jesus wants to be your shepherd. In the name of Jesus, amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen Amen.